Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Molchop here. Coming at you with another StarCraft commentary from the MSL 100. This is number 56, as you can see right there. This is a match between Nalra and Midas. And it should be a really fun game, actually. Looking forward to this. I mean, actually, I mean, I guess all of the MSL 100 games are, are at least good because they've been picked specifically to be some of the top 100. So this is the if this is the 56th best MSL game ever, then you gotta assume that it's gonna be pretty good. There were a lot of MSL games over the years. Um, I guess what? Let's see. There was like two or three MSLs a year times uh, 10 years or something like that. Although this was probably broadcast a little earlier than the end of it. So maybe let's say like eight years of MSLs. And I'm just doing a little quick maths here. There probably would have been a, at least several hundred like games played in the MSL. So there must have been a lot of, a lot to choose from. Um, in any case, uh, maths aside, this is Midas, by the way. I don't remember if I've cast a game with him yet um, in recent days. I actually think I might have casted some games with him back in the old days because he actually... So this game was played in 2004 that we're watching right now, but um, Midas ends up being active until like 07 or 08 or something like that. Um, not really someone that was ever a huge contender. Um, he may have gotten into the round of eight or something like that in some of the later Star Leagues, but his peak was probably about now in 2004, basically. Um, and it's interesting, you gotta, <laughs> when you, when you look at people's uh, achievements or stats or whatever, you, you have to kind of look at them a little bit closely as well, because, um, you know, if you look at Midas's list of achievements, he does have like five titles, but if you just look a little more closely, one of them was the dual tournament, which was the qualifier tournament to get into the round of 16 of the OSL, um, or the round of 32 of the OSL. And so, like, if someone wins that, it, it's, that means that they're winning against, you know, the the second-rate player, not second-rate necessarily, but this, uh, theoretically, the lower tier of players in the Star League. So if, so if you just look at it and it says, oh, we got a gold medal in the on-game on net dual tournament, well, that's... You know, it's not necessarily that great. So, so all of Metis's achievements are that kind of thing. He did get uh, the, into WCG Korea a couple times, or uh, to, he got far in that, which is the qualifying tournament to become a representative of Korea in WCG. And that's not um, difficult either. But it's not as I mean, it's not not difficult. That's not easy to to win. It's still going to be against the top talent, but it's usually a smaller tournament, and it's not as prestigious. So, uh, any case. Point being, though, Midas is a solid player, and uh, even though he never accomplished a ton, he is someone that you have to look out for, and he's playing against Nalra right now. Nalra, who I've talked about multiple times before, um, but Nalra, of course, being one of the Protoss legends of all time, and this is kind of in Nalra's real prime time as well, so this is, both these players are in their prime right now, so it could go really either way. This is the... Um, Golf King MSL round of 16 by the way, so this is a pretty important game This is the second game and I actually I'm not sure who won the first game So one of them is up one to nothing. Oh wait, maybe I can read the text on the screen right now um, Yes, okay, so actually Midas is up a game. So there you go um, Yeah, it says <laughs> I could have just looked at the uh the 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 P12 to known that the Protoss at 12 o'clock was was him, but I also just knew that he was his Korean name is Kang Min. Anyway, I uh, should talk about the game a little bit here. Um, we've got just kind of normal stuff, one base play going on here, no quick expansions or anything like that, and it looks like this SCV somehow snuck all the way into the base, which is kind of amazing that it got by those dragoons and by the dragoon and was able to get all the way into the base there. A little bit of shenanigans there by the SCV. It is going to die in the mineral line, but not before it sees, uh, well, all the tech, or I should say maybe the lack of tech. I don't know. If, I think there was a building down below that he didn't see or something like that. But, yeah, the robotics facility, I mean, he might not have noticed. Um, but he was able to kind of see that there wasn't, like, any kind of, like, crazy two or three gate play or anything, something like that. So he kind of can know that he can be a little bit safe here, He's getting his control tower down on his starport. Maybe for a drop, it might be. This is a good map for a drop, drop ships. So uh, real quick about this map, I probably should have started with this, but you can see, it's a, 
it's uh, relatively close positions by air, but this map is actually a little bit of a weird. You see this like S shape that that the the fog of war has been removed on. Um, it's it's this weird S shape path in order to walk from your base to the enemy base. And then there's also like you walk down and there's no real good easy natural, but then you have to walk up another ramp and down another ramp to get to another base in the back or there's one in the front. So it's a really, really strange map. So it just kind of suffice it to say that there's lots of um, hills and valleys and you have to go between uh, the hills and valleys in order to get to different parts of the map and what have you. So it's really difficult to get a second base um, and that might be one of the reasons why we're doing this. And you can see actually he's blocking off with pylons easy access to one of the bases in the back, I believe. So he's actually getting rates. Wow, Midas is getting rates and not dropships actually. Um, which is very interesting, possibly in anticipation of shuttle play. And you can see he's kind of anticipating uh, something to come out in shuttles because he's spacing his tanks apart all around the uh, his main base. He's got this wraith out. And it could have just been one wraith, just a little bit of anti-air. That might have been what was going on there. Um, and just really smart against uh, if you're expecting river drops or if you're expecting any kind of a drop play. To, uh, the wraith is actually pretty effective. So and that's exactly what we have here. We have the shuttle out. We have a dragoon inside of it. Possibly a couple of zealots. Uh, I haven't seen. Uh, I didn't see if there was a reaver in there, but we did see the robotic support base. So we can kind of assume there's probably a dragoon and a reaver in that, in that uh, shuttle. And Midas is pretty much prepared for it. Um, here comes the shuttle in, and he's got an observer out as well. So all the tech is out for uh, Nalra. And, but he's he's built one dropship, which could be useful in a counterattack as well. Okay, so here's the shuttle coming in here, kind of spying what's going on. Three tanks are kind of on the prowl, waiting. If a reaver does drop out, they can just pop hits directly onto it. Of course, the scarab will still probably go off. They won't be able to kill it quite in time with just three tanks, but um, it's very, very effective. You can't really do enough damage to make it worth losing the reaver if they're just waiting to, to attack you right underneath. And so Kangmin Nalra just kind of leaves. He says, okay, well, you know what? The river isn't going to do any, any damage. I'm just going to expand, get my uh, economy going, get my macro going instead, and make it a little bit longer game instead. And I'm going to use the threat of the reaver to make sure that you have to kind of stay in your base a little bit. And are we going to see a command center go down? At some, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Midas get a command center in his main and then float it out to one of these side bases because... Um, the side bases, like I said, are a little bit difficult to defend. They're in strange positions. He instead has, well, not instead, but he has two drop ships. Uh, he's loading up with units for a potential counter drop play. And this could be pretty devastating. Uh, Nalra does not have a ton of ground forces right now since he invested a lot of money in the shuttle and the reaver. They're a little bit spread out as well. And there's the Wraith, of course, as well. He's, what he's going to do with the Wraith? Is the Wraith just a distraction? Oh, he's actually going to drop, whoa, four tanks over here. And he's going to follow up on the ground with some vultures. But um, he's sh going to be shelling that expansion. He's got just a Wraith in there. This is a little bit dangerous because there's nothing protecting those tanks right now other than one Wraith. And here we go. And actually, he's, oh, the vultures get there just in time. He drops out the Dragoon first. And the Reaver does not pop out. Whoa, actually disastrous play there by Nalra, losing a Dragoon basically for nothing. Um, he may have done some damage to those tanks, but uh, uh, not very effective at all. Those vultures showed up at just the exact perfect time. Otherwise, he would have been able to easily drop out the Reaver and get some Scarab shots onto those tanks and probably followed up with the Dragoons on the ground to kill those tanks, which would have been disastrous. So um, really good timing there, getting those vultures there just in time. And Nalra is now trying to drop some units, ferry them out of his main base into uh, the area behind there. But is he going to be able to assault this location before that Nexus goes down? This is just such a bad spot for Nalra. Look at these tanks are able to stay on that high ground and shell the the Nexus. Well, some the tanks on the low ground, I believe, were shelling the Nexus, and the tanks on the high ground were protecting them, essentially. And But Nalra has, has ferried several Dragoons into the middle of the map so that he can kind of intercept the, the, a, the, a different route. And... Um, this is such a crazy map. You can see he's actually now pushing here into the main base of Nalra. Nalra has moved his Dragoons in to attack the natural, but he's actually just pushing him with tanks and vultures into the main. He's not controlling the tanks very much, but now he is picking them up in the dropships. 
And he's actually just going to get out with those tanks having done significant damage. And this is kind of crazy play. Like, this is 2004 play, ladies and gentlemen. It's um, not as crisp as you'd expect. Like, I don't think I've ever seen uh, anyone just, like, just say, okay, well, I've got uh, a handful of tanks and, and vultures. I'm just going to walk up the main ramp um, into the Protoss base. And there's the command center, another command center going down that's going to probably float over as I, as I ex expected. Or suspected might happen um, uh, anyway I didn't see if actually Midas has a second base all also who did he did he save it from the damage by picking up that tanks looks like he might have and uh, anyway Nalra has this other uh, stuff up north I don't th there's not a base there. okay he spots the tech though yeah so he's actually gonna be able to drop out is he gonna he's not gonna go for that free tech building kill I guess he's interested more in going for the uh the main base and trying to do some harassment on the main supply line and that's where he's coming in he's you can see there's a cannon there but there's not actually there's a really good drop position behind the mineral lines if he wanted to go there but he's not instead he's flying back to his main with these units just trying to escape with them rather than use them for more harassment nara is at one base right now but two dark templar are running in to the front door they're going for the turret first not the best decision uh, the, the comm set goes down anyway. I guess it's kind of a good decision because if you kill the turret, then you can send more DTs in, but he doesn't have any DTs to follow up with, so, um, uh, and I'm not trying to say that Nalra is bad at decision making or anything like that, but it just didn't, it's, as the caster is having the vision of the whole map, we know it's not going to work out with the Terran reinforcements coming in right there, but yeah, he just basically loses two Dark Templar for nothing, and, um, uh, whether he could have predicted it or not, it's unfortunate for him because now he's he's pretty behind trying to get another base up, but Midas is already ahead of him on getting that second base up. Um, and uh, he's going to be able to float right out there and and just take it pretty easily. And actually, is he floating two bases? Is that what we're seeing? Yeah, he's okay. So he's floating one to the forward natural and one to the, the base that's behind that, again, uh, you can kind of, uh, it's hard to see, but you, but from the natural, you have to go up a ramp on the right side there and then down another ramp into that extra base. So, but point being though, if you have that natural, you're kind of protected from ground play. You're protecting all three of your bases through that natural. So it's a pretty strong position to hold if you can get out that for it's a little bit far from the main. And actually here comes in with another dark Templar and uh, trying to do some harassment on the forces and he doesn't have any mobile detection he's trying to build turrets but is he out of comsat energy is that what's going on here um for some reason i expected to have more comsat energy but um apparently he doesn't is he gonna drag mine oh huge mine drag taking out uh three or four enemy units along with him is beautiful play and he's actually at the same time while the dts have scared the units back while he's trying to buy time for the comsat energy um, he goes in with Dragoons and attacks the, the main base. The Reaver being dropped out in the back. The tanks are firing onto the Dragoons while the Reaver gets Scarab shops. He's using the Shuttle Micro very effectively. It looks like the front tank is going to go down, but I believe uh, Nalra is going to be forced back here. Is he going to be able to kill off the command center? He does kill off the command center, though, and it had a comset station attached, so that is going to be a loss of a comset station for now as well. Oh, he can probably kill off the comset station, too. And, um... <coughs> Whoa, excuse me. <laughs> Random sneeze. Um, in any case, uh, Nalra is trying to fight his way back into this game, and now he's done it. It was three bases to one, essentially, at, at one moment, and then now it's two bases to, do, to two, and so it's a pretty... Not a bad situation for Nara, but he's gonna, looks like he's going to take some damage on these units. And a Psy Storm goes down on those high ground tanks. He's going to attack from the other side with the low ground on, on the, I'm sorry, from the high ground with Dragoons as well. And wipes out that force, completely protecting any attempt to push in on this new second Nexus. And um, I believe Nara probably should be thinking about taking a third Nexus at this point too. Um, but he may not have the, the funds to do so. And oh, merges into an Archon just before... Um, that's taken out. Uh, the vultures just running right up into the main base, planting some mines in front of the main gateways. And this is showing you how kind of behind Nalra is that he just didn't have the forces in front of his base to uh, to really do anything. And taking some pot shots on the Templar archives there, just just to just to sh practice their side blades a little bit. They're like, ah, oh, well, it's got shields; they'll regenerate. It's fine. 
Um, Nara is going to push back out of his main base and retake control of his natural, though, uh, having stormed the tanks away very, very effectively. And he, there he is taking the third base as well. So, again, even though it's very close on the minimap, it's actually pretty far on walking distance on the map. And, oh, he's going to try and do an attack from behind, though. Um, like I said, this is just a crazy uh, topsy-turvy map with different routes all over the place. And he's run some vultures up around the top the long way around and is now going to be attacking with those vultures. And he's looked like he had a dropship there with pot potentially some other units. Here he comes in. The Archon is inside. He drops out the Archon first to start doing damage and do some distraction. The DT comes out next, and he marches in with Dragoons at the same time, forcing the tanks to unseize with the shuttle, and then running in with the Dragoons at the same time is going to force... Uh, Midas out of his natural expansion and now he's coming into the third base as well then it's completely undefended at the same time though the vultures are coming in and attacking Nara's third base this is crazy we're seeing almost a base trade scenario here and he's attacking the second base from the top. That dropship that I mentioned before did have two tanks in it. Oh, the zealots are coming in here pretty close, though. Is one of the tanks going to survive? It looks like probably not. There's too many zealots there. And the storm on top of them just to polish things off. And uh, it takes a couple of zealots with them, but it doesn't matter. And this is so interesting that he's got these tanks on the high ground, but he just doesn't. He's too scared to siege them because he doesn't know if a shuttle's going to come in and drop units right on top. He doesn't really have a lot of uh, vultures, so he doesn't really have the support units to stop anything from happening. Now he finally seizes up, and this is what we were talking about. The mine takes the long way around the supply depot and kills a tank. And um, Midas is falling apart here, but so is Nalra. Nalra losing his base. Midas losing his base. Nalra uh, looks like he's successfully defended one of those bases. Midas does have the command center still one of his command centers floating so if he can retake it he can he can land it and and be fine but he is mined out of his main and he currently has no other landed bases no he can't lose that he's pushing out this is Midas's last push I think if he does not defend this and push in and take control of this natural expansion he's gonna lose the game 100% and he does manage to use it using um, the SCVs actually as a, a kind of a wall of of metal in front of his units in order to just make sure that they can push out and the tanks can do damage to Dragoons. But this shuttle might be filled with doom for Midas, depending on what he can accomplish with it. There's no turret set up yet. He doesn't have a lot of vultures. And here he's dropping out DTs on top of the tanks. Oh, ho, ho, huge mine. Takes out a ton. Nice size storm doing a lot of damage to the vultures. The vul Is it going to be enough, though? Can he protect? He's going to have to pull SCVs again to protect these tanks. He's just got three tanks. If those three tanks die, the Zealots or Dragoons will polish off this last base and win him the game. But he is going to barely successfully defend again. Maybe. There's still a couple of Zealots there. W only one tank is left. Only a single tank is left. And uh, he's going to be producing a couple more, but his economy is so battered right now that he can't really produce maybe more than one tank at a time uh, at this point. And um, it, this is just looking really bad for Midas because Nara has held on to his base, his bases, um, where he took a lot of harassment and it looked like they were going to trade bases. But um, in the end, Nara kept his bases and Midas has just been taking such a beating that he still, he just has this one base left. He's lost a lot of SCV. Oh no, he did save both command centers. Okay, I thought this other command center had died too, but it looks like it still exists. So he's able to mine there. Oh no, huge storm drop incoming. It kills so many SCVs. Oh, an absolute slaughter of SCVs. Oh, just devastating. Midas's economy could not take that hit. And it did, and um, look at this arena, isn't that cool? <laughs> Such a small little uh, arena spot. Anyway, Midas looks like maybe he's not in as bad of shape as I thought because he's able to defend that second base uh, for like the fifth time, just barely holding on. And he's, he has that third base as well. Um, so are we going to equalize here? It looks like it might be three bases versus three bases. Both players have lost a significant amount of their worker units um, uh, throughout all these attacks and harassments, but it looks like uh, things might kind of stabilize into a three base versus three base play. Stargate going down for uh, Nalra, possibly to shift into getting at some Arbors to go along with this tech. If he's got a Templar Archives, the Arbors are an easy transition to make. And... Um, Wow, this is interesting. Wait, what? Wait, what is going... Nalra is taking the bottom left base behind Midas's main, and I don't think Midas could do anything about it.
I don't think Midas can do anything about it because he he can't spare the forces from his own natural. Otherwise, oh, the attempted storm drop does not succeed. Oh, he gets another. Oh, he drops out both both High Templar. Oh, he picks it back up. It, it did not, he, either he had three, okay, he just had a bunch of High Templar in the shuttle. I didn't see if he picked them up or if they died. I thought they died, but he might have just had four High Templar. Either way, not doing too much damage, losing at least one High Templar, possibly two. And um, so, really needed to do more damage with that, unfortunately. Um, Midas is now still in the game, basically. He, if he crippled his economy by killing off yet more SCVs there, if he, you know, slaughtered the SCVs one more time, I, th I don't know if um, Midas would be able to come back as, as far as e economically. But yeah, Nalra just taking that bottom left base, which, uh, like I said, is it's a really strange... Um, uh, ground path to get there and he actually drops the high templar in the back to storm the tanks because their shots were on cooldown having hit the zealots coming in the front and he does get a double storm on the tanks and beautiful play takes out the tanks and Midas has just never been able to build up the the tank count that you want as a Terran player just to get you know you want to get a, a t actually is he getting carriers did I miss a fleet beacon somewhere he might be getting carriers right now which would actually be a really good really good move on this map carriers are going to be super super solid on this map the the air mobility is going to be so much better than than ground mobility because of the weird weird place the way this is shaped and what is going on two archons dropping out to soak up damage well as zealots run in the front the archons going directly to the tanks and attacking them and there's the gg coming from midas um <laughs> oh man what a crazy game what a crazy game um yeah, and I mean, Midas there, even though, you know, he wasn't dead, he wasn't losing his main or anything like that, he just knew that he just, he, losing those few tanks, and it just kept happening over and over again, he just kept losing the few tanks that he had, and trying to scrape by and get a, another force up, and spreading them out, and trying to protect them, and just, just never quite had the economy to really build up enough forces to really protect his tanks enough to really, um build up a solid army um nara was just continual with his harassment and his uh his pressure just so much pressure from nara the entire game um starting with you know just a, a shuttle with a dragoon and a reaver in it all that that didn't do a ton in itself but again it kept the pressure on it kept him in his base um so just you know Midas was never able to build up a, a large enough force and partly that's because he was sending out his own forces to do you know kind of cheeky stuff too you know sending out dropships with tanks to attack uh from behind nalra's third uh or behind his second or whatever it was and uh you know imagine that those four tanks had been at his natural instead instead of dying there then maybe he could have defended against one of the assaults that nalra made against his own bases and then it would have been a longer macro game or something along those lines so um you never know anyway Nara takes the game, and that does tie it up, and um, this is a round of 16 game. I do not know who wins the third game of this set, actually. I guess you could look it up if you wanted to and watch it. Um, I do not have the VOD, but uh, not that I'm aware of, though. Sometimes there have been, uh, in this MSL 100 list, there have been games where like I casted... Uh, one game from the round of eight and then in the next and then a few games later it was like a game from the round of 16 of the same star league or something like that but um anyway really crazy game uh <laughs> mvp goes to raid assault the name of the map that we played on just a really wacky map with lots of tur uh, turns and twists and uh just a weird map construction that made all that crazy play possible so um, in any case, hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks very much for watching. GG.